This right here, what I'm about to show you, might be the craziest thing yet involving Connor Stallions because we got evidence to back up these claims. And I get it, it may be hard to believe. When I first saw it, I didn't believe it. But when I saw the evidence, I was like, well, I guess it's gotta be true. Connor Stallions helped South Carolina beat Tennessee. I hope all of you are having a fantastic Friday. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. And also, I hope you're ready to hear about and learn about some new information and details involving this Michigan scandal. Or actually, my bad, my bad, my apologies. We can't call this a scandal. That's ridiculous. You know what we gotta call this. The Michigan Manifesto. That's what we gotta call from here on out. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the man behind all this, Connor Stallions, he was labeling it, or my bad, not labeling it, but he had a 550 to 600 page manifesto plan to take over the Michigan football program. And part of this plan involved the sign stealing, so yeah, we're just calling this the manifesto. It's Friday, I don't got time to waste, you don't got time to waste. I say we get straight into it. This topic is so important, it is the one and only topic we're gonna talk about. Strap in, lock in, buckle up, do what you gotta do, get you a nice snack and popcorn because this video is gonna be really informative and you gotta pay attention to every small detail. There's so much we gotta unwrap in today's video, and like I said in yesterday's video, this situation is like an onion. We're just continuing to peel back the layers and the more and more we continue to peel this onion back the more stuff we find out and guess what your boy connor stallions here he tried to steal tcu signs but here's the kicker tcu had dummy signs they was prepared for it and check this out and this is where things really get eye-opening to me it looks like connor stallions helped south carolina upset and beat tennessee last year it's crazy man it's crazy we got a lot to talk about it i know i said i wasn't doing no intro but i guess this is the intro my apologies and real quick while i'm thinking about it if you like college football content and you want to see more consider joining our amazing college football community guys we are now less than 2,000 subscribers away from 300,000. that's awesome consider subscribing and helping us get to 300k if you don't want to that is cool too all right matt blah 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 shut the crap up now without further ado Let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, let's get this out of the way. There's really three parts to this video, and this is part one. Yesterday, breaking news comes out that the NCAA enforcement staff has been at the University of Michigan this week to look into the sign still and probe. A source confirmed to ESPN that the NCAA has begun to search the electronics of Michigan football staff members, which was first reported by the Detroit News. ESPN reported last week that the NCAA had immediate interest in Stallion's computer, and it appears the scope of the NCAA's interest has expanded. To go along with that, ESPN also reported that the NCAA received stadium surveillance video this week that a person sitting in the seat purchased by Stallions was using electronics to film a game which is not allowed under the rules. Mmm, yeah. Interesting. What do y'all think about that? So it wasn't Stallion sitting in the seat, but it was someone else sitting in the seat that Stallions purchased. And this goes back to the whole loophole we've already talked about where Stallions, he pretty much had his own scouts and he was paying players, or not players, my bad, but paying other people to go to these games and scout them out and send them the information. But yet again, it goes back to this. The dude's got to be a psychopath, but I admire the sheer dedication. So that is the newest and newest updates for the NCAA and what they're doing, but here's the juicy stuff. Very recently, it was reported that TCU knew about Michigan sign stealing before their matchup in the college football playoff semifinal game. Quote unquote, TCU coaches learned from the other staffs about Michigan's elaborate sign stealing before the college football playoff semifinal. But check this out. TCU changed signs but used dummy old signs to trick the Wolverines. What about that? So pretty much I'll try to dumb this down for you. TCU kept their old signs, but they also made new ones. So what TCU did during the game was they would use the old dummy signals in Michigan and be like, oh yeah, they're going to run this play. But the TCU players were told to ignore those. I think the greatest comparison I can give you is if you ever played baseball. A lot of times your third base coach or the catcher is going to have dummy signals and you're just looking for the indicator. And pretty much that's what TCU is doing. They kept the old signs to convince Michigan that they actually knew what was going on when in reality they didn't continuing along here though this definitely raised my eyebrow you may be sitting there wondering just like myself well how did tcu know that michigan was still in signs well apparently and allegedly other big 10 teams were quick to notify the horn frogs once the cfp semifinal matchups were announced dellinger reported that tcu received phone calls from other coaching staffs including ohio state around the country warning them of what will occur that to me is really interesting because it wasn't just Ohio State, but multiple different teams reached out to him and was like, hey, here's what's going to happen. Just be prepared. Fast forward in time to the game. Check this out. Here's what a TCU staff member had to say about all of it. The guy, Connor Stallions, was wrong a couple of times. 
We rewatch the TV version of the game. You can see him standing next to the defensive coordinator. He tells something to the coordinator and he points in the air to mean pass. You can see the play sheet he's holding with our hand signs on them. What about that, man? What about that? And I can just imagine Connor Stallions seeing TCU do those dummy signs, not knowing they're dummy signs. And I guarantee you, Connor Stallions, he thought he was the smartest man in the world. He probably saw one of the old signs and was like, oh yeah, this is going to be a pass play. And it turns out to be a run play and he's all confused. He's like, wait a minute. Well, what's going on? It was supposed to be a pass. Gosh, man, you can't make this up, but clap it up. Clap it up to TCU for just being prepared. And oh yeah, by the way, since we're talking about it, I still can't believe Michigan lost that TCU team last year. It's not to say that TCU wasn't good, but that entire game, it felt like Michigan was winning from start to end. I can't believe they lost, man. I'll leave it at that. Anyways, though, continuing along here, if that wasn't enough for you, I got some more. This right here, what I'm about to show you, might be the craziest thing yet involving Connor Stallions because we got evidence to back up these claims. And I get it. It may be hard to believe. When I first saw it, I didn't believe it. But when I saw the evidence, I was like, well, I guess it's got to be true. Connor Stallions helped South Carolina beat Tennessee. So last year, guess what? Your boy Connor Stallions here, a.k.a. Manifesto, man, whatever you want to call him, he purchased tickets to the Tennessee-Kentucky game. He didn't go to this game, but remember, Connor Stallions, he had his own, I guess you'd say, like, minions working for him. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think this is the greatest comparison. This is like the Minions movie with Gru. He's Gru, and then he's got all these minions working for him. And I didn't want to believe this, but after seeing this, I think it's almost indisputable. On a Tennessee message board last year on December 1st, 2022, someone wrote this. Oh, do I have a story on that? One of my little brother's quote-unquote friends is a quote-unquote scout for them. They paid for him to travel to the UT Bandy game, had planned it before the loss, obviously, to try to steal our signs. He's from Nashville originally, so he just went anyway, even after a loss, since it was Thanksgiving. Says he and his others are never allowed to talk to Harbaugh directly about it. Whew. Oh, man, oh, man. What do y'all think about that? I try to debunk every single thing. But this was written on December 1st, 2022. I'm going to be real with y'all. I probably wouldn't believe this if this just came out a week ago or yesterday. Because at that point in time, it just looks like somebody's trying to get some cloud off the situation. But since this person wrote this in 2022, I want to believe them. I really do. And I don't see how you can't believe them. It all adds up, doesn't it? Connor Stallions buying all these tickets to go to these games and scout for these teams. And whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I know exactly what you're sitting there saying. Matt, why would he want to scout Tennessee, though? I mean, what's going on with that? My friend, my friend, that's a great question. It's because Connor Stallions, he's 10 steps ahead of everybody. Tennessee was a potential opponent that Michigan could have faced in the playoff. And like this post says right here, obviously they didn't care to scout Tennessee after they lost to South Carolina. But the point in all this was, it was looking like Tennessee could have possibly gotten into the playoff and Connor Stallions, he was just preparing for the worst. It gets even better though. The same user who wrote that, Mr. Arnie Palmer alert, also said this a couple months later. No clue if related, but I posted on here a couple months ago about a mutual friend of mine that was working for Michigan, going to other schools games, and stealing plays. They paid for his flights, lodging, food, and seats right behind that team's bench for him to get video notes, etc. Michigan is pulling out all the stops, it seems. Can check my history to confirm if you want. Guy had tickets to our game at Vandy as they already paid for stuff thinking they'd see us in the playoffs before we lost to South Carolina. Now some of you may be saying, well Matt, how did they know Connor Stallions bought tickets to this Tennessee game? And the answer to that question is very simple, but it's also mind-boggling because Connor Stallions had this manifesto plan, but yet he wasn't smart enough to understand and realize he probably shouldn't be buying tickets with his own name. That's what he did. He bought tickets to this game, the Tennessee game, with his own name. I don't know why he did that, but he didn't cross all his T's and dot his I's. It gets even better though, and this is why all of it adds up. Shane Beamer, and I'll show it to you right here, he has been fined before for accepting leaked game plan information. This was dating all the way back to when he was assistant coach at Georgia, and he got fined $25,000 for this. You see it right here. But also to go on top of this, check this out. I found this really odd. Against Tennessee, South Carolina, they wore wristbands, obviously, on their wrist. Why is that important? Why am I bringing it up? Because that was the first time they did that all season long. And it was also the last time they did it all season long. Hmm. Interesting, to say the least. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but it's all pointing towards that Connor Stallions helped out South Carolina in this game. And I'll show you this for laughs and giggles because I said it mind boggled me last year. Before the Tennessee game, South Carolina lost to Florida, a pitiful Florida team last year, 38-6. to 
and then the following week, they just destroyed Tennessee 63-38. See what I'm saying? Even that looks fishy. Granted, I'll just chalk that up to college football being college football because we see that happen all the time, but it is fishy. You can't deny that. I don't know what to think, man. I really don't. I'll do this. I'll leave the ball in your court. Let me know in the comment section what you think about all this. I'm curious about the Roman